there, and welcome to another episode of Editor's Notes uh, with me, Cy Williams. Here are some of the cannabis-based news items that I'm paying attention to this Friday, April 22nd, 2022. Now, the O Cannabis Cannabis Awards Gala launched its official voting platform on their website this week. Canadians in the cannabis industry are encouraged to vote for their favorites. Now, some of the categories cover best people, best brands, uh, companies, best lighting, best packaging, uh, all sorts of categories of cultivation and more. And I am honored to inform you that our team here at High Canada Magazine was nominated in three categories. Our main platform, High Canada Magazine was listed in the nominees among other Canadian cannabis-focused magazine for Best News Source. Woohoo! Our Ontario and Global Editor, Tammy Stanhope, was nominated for Best Social Media. And can I ever tell you, does she ever deserve this award? Tammy is more wired into the Canadian and international cannabis landscape than the majority of the people out there. And she is seamlessly blending legacy ideals and a giant sense of community with the legalized state of cannabis today and has been doing so for quite some time. Now, lastly, the third, I was honored to be nominated for Activist Advocate of the Year. And I am just so hyped to be recognized by my peers in this way. Head over to uh, the ocannabis.com website to register to vote for your favorites today. And now for the, uh, the news that I was paying attention to this week, because there was some. Now, hemp trade is poised to grow in uh, Alberta, so I say experts. Hemp could become the next big crop in Alberta now that big processing plants have arrived. And this is what advocates at a recent hemp conference held in Edmonton had to say. About 200 people gathered at the Edmonton International Airport's Renaissance Hotel on April 22nd. For, and they did this to explore the world of hemp opportunities. Um, hemp is an emerging industry, uh, especially in Canada, which could create jobs and diversity in Alberta's economy, said uh, St. Albert resident Perry Kincaid, who organized this particular conference on behalf of the Alberta Hemp Alliance. Everyone is high on the value of hemp seed and hemp oils as a traditional news, uh, food source, he noted. And researchers are finding new uses for hemp fibers in fabrics, plastics, and airplane components, Kincaid said. He also said that this year's conference, the third he has organized since 2018, uh, focused on the financial and the marketing barriers for hemp in Alberta. Guests heard from panelists and from uh, major investment banks in Alberta and hemp producers themselves about the challenges and opportunities of hemp. And I understand there were keynote addresses as well from Alberta Jobs Minister Doug Schweizer and Indigenous Relations Minister Rick Wilson. So that it sounds like it was a pretty amazing event. Kincaid said that he sees hemp as a rapidly developing technology with a huge number of industrial applications. An entire supply chain can be built right here in Alberta, he went on to say. Hemp is cannabis and that contains no more than 0.3% THC. And that's the main psychoactive substance found in cannabis, said Jesse Hahn of Natural Fiber Technologies, who was a, a panelist at this conference. Legal to grow in Canada since 1998, hemp has typically been raised for its seeds, which are rich in omega fatty acids, and its fibrous stalks, which uh, companies use in hempcrete cinder blocks, uh, since recreational cannabis was legalized in 2018, farmers have also been able to sell hemp flowers and the leaves, the substances uh, in which, uh, which have many medical applications. Hemp is still a rare crop in Alberta, uh, said Manny Diol of the Alberta Hemp Alliance, and he estimates that there are maybe 
40,000 acres of it under cultivation in Alberta, compared to some 6.7 million acres of canola, and that's uh, as of 2021. Kincaid added that hemp faces a processing bottleneck in Alberta, particularly in terms of decortication, facilities to separate the hemp stalks into their component fibers. These processing plants typically cost tens of millions of dollars, which is pretty steep, uh, a very steep price for some investors to overcome. Now, according to reports, the Canadian Rockies Hemp Corporation, uh, Inc., uh, and uh, Renew Tech, and Blue Sky Hemp Ventures are in the process of developing large hemp processing plants in Alberta, and they will want hemp from local Albertan farmers. It has been predicted that Alberta could have more than a million acres of hemp planted within the next five years as a result of this initiative. Kincaid also said that new truck-sized decortication machines, also known as decorticators, which cost about $300,000 each, have recently emerged on the market. Now, one of our favorite Canadian companies on the cutting edge for the last few years of decortication are Canna Systems out of Ontario, Canada. Big shout out to them. Now, such devices could be more affordable to farming communities and uh, could help them start up a hemp industry in their own area. Hans said governments can help hemp flourish by allowing farmers to plant more varieties of it and sell hemp seed as animal feed. Han pitched hemp as a high-value crop, which farmers can add to their crop uh, and their crop rotations to reduce the risk of soil-borne diseases such as club root, which can absolutely devastate canola, and it's all, it is also a rapidly renewable resource which people can use in place of many wood and petrochemical products, reducing our overall reliance on forestry and fossil fuels. It has enormous potential, he said. In other news, in the U.S., a bride and her caterer were arrested for allegedly dosing guests with cannabis. Hmm. Not sure about you, but the majority of my friends are cannabis users, and it is not uncommon in my circles to have edible tables or infused catering at such events. That being said, this was in Florida, and the wedding occurred in the middle of February in the city of Longwood in central Florida. Responding Officials wrote in their incident reports that several of the 50 guests present reported feeling weird after eating meatballs, Caesar salad, tortellini, and bread with olive oil and herb dip. Oh my gosh, I'm getting hungry reading this news report. According to officials, the bride was asked by police at the scene whether she had allowed for drugs to be put into the guest's food. She said no, she denied it. One guest, however, told investigators that she witnessed a member of the catering staff adding what she liked to refer to as a green substance to the dish, and that would later contain olive oil. And now it should be noted what she was referring to is commonly known as shake, cannabis shake, which is the small scraps that fall off the larger amounts of cannabis. Now, the affidavit uh, states, uh, stated, uh, claimed that the bride admitted to adding cannabis to the olive oil were, when the pair were on the dance floor. Now, secondhand account, but hey, you know, the caterer and her staff left the party before authorities could question them, uh, which is unfortunate because they probably could have shed some light on how things were prepared. Uh, police left after collecting glassware and food to be tested. Sounds like they had a little bit of the munchies themselves because they also took the chocolate-covered strawberries, the pudding desserts, and, of course, the lasagna back to the station with them. Officials said that bread and lasagna later tested positive for THC, which is the psychoactive chemical uh, found in cannabis. 
Three guests also tested positive for cannabis. Well, sounds like nobody got into the buffet that day. The caterer and the bride were arrested on the Monday before 420. And my, my most heartfelt wishes out to them. Medical cannabis is legal in Florida, but not the recreational use of drugs like in some U.S. states. So um, I'm interested to see how this particular story unfolds. Now back to Canada, the Green Organic Dutchman um, hosted a 420 hotline on 420 April 20th this year to offer resources to those who wanted to celebrate the cannabis holiday with T-God, the Green Organic Dutchman. Now, the Greer Organic Dutchman CEO, Sean Bovingdon, expressed the importance of answering questions and helping out firsthand any consumers who needed guidance when consuming cannabis. And sometimes we all need a little bit of guidance. VFP of Marketing of the Green Organic Dutchman, Drew Campbell, stated that from the evolution of the counterculture movement to the growing legalization of cannabis around the world, the spirit of 420 has always been to celebrate cannabis with others. And we can help ensure that everyone has access to the information that they need on this big day. Well, thank you, thank you, Green Organic Dutchman. New survey data shows that Canadian cannabis consumption is higher than ever. An Ipsos survey published on April 14th shared that 55% of Canadians were aware that 420 celebrations were happening in their area. And that since legalization began in 2018, 36% more are more open and positive about cannabis use. Overall, data showed that 42% of Canadians consumed cannabis during the last year. An estimated 20% of Canadians said that if they had more educational resources, they would be more likely to consume. And 70% said educational research sources would have absolutely no impact on their consumption. Okay, that's all for today, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to cast your votes in this year's O Cannabis Industry Awards. And above all else, stay lifted, um, stay happy. We have a brand new issue, 71, of High Canada Magazine available for free digital download off our website. That's highcanada.net. Okay, stay lifted, and I'll see you soon.